This video covers Appendix 2 from your textbook, and it talks about how to use matrices as another way to solve systems of equations, both 2x2 two two systems, 3x3 three three systems, or any size. And the way it works is kind of the same as the elimination and substitution method, but we, we call the steps row operations. And there's really three main types of row operations. Um, the first type is that any two rows of a matrix can be interchanged. The second type is that elements of any row can be multiplied by a non-zero number. That's kind of the elimination method when we multiply the equations by numbers. And then any element, the third thing is any element in any row can be changed by adding non-zero multiples to another row's elements. And in order to use row operations to solve systems, we need to first put equations into a matrix. And what we call it is actually an augmented matrix. A matrix is a rectangular array of numbers organized in rows and columns. And an augmented matrix is split up into two parts by a vertical line. So if I wanted to take the system in this problem, 2x plus 3y equals 13 and 5x minus 4y equals negative 2, if I wanted to put that in an augmented matrix, it would look like the following. The first row would have 2, 3, and 13. And the second row would have 5, negative 4, and negative 2. If you look at this augmented matrix, the very first thing you'll see is that the um, left-hand side has all the coefficients of the terms, the 2 and the 3, just like here, 2 and 3, and then the 5, negative 4, just like over here. And then on the other side of the matrix, the right-hand side, it has the 13 and the negative 2. Now, we're going to go ahead and perform some row operations to this matrix. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to take and try to get this matrix to have in, in this first position right here. We want that to be a 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 1 half and multiply it by row 1. 1 half times row 1. And what that does is it turns this matrix into 1 for the first position. 3 times 1 half is 3 halves. And then um, 13 halves. We're not going to do anything to the second row right now. We'll just leave it as is. And now we would like, secondly, so firstly, we wanted this position to be a 1. And secondly, we would like this position to be a 0. So the way we're going to do that is by doing a type 2 row operation. Or I'm sorry, type 3 row operation. We are going to take negative 5 multiplied times row 1 and add it to row two. That is an example of this third type of row operation. And when we do that, we're not going to change the top row. It's going to stay as is. But we're going to take one and multiply it by negative five and then add that to positive five. So one times negative five is negative five. Negative five added to five is zero. That's what we wanted. But we also have to take the 3 halves times negative 5. 3 halves times negative 5 is negative 7.5. And when you add that to negative 4, you get negative 11.5 or negative 23 halves. And then we also have to take the 13 over 2 and multiply that times negative 5 which comes out to negative 32.5. When you add that to negative 2, you get negative 34.5, which is negative 69 halves. Now, this matrix is still 
not complete. Um, our goal in the end here is we're going to take our original augmented matrix with data points here, 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 and here. And we want to go through some steps and we want to get it to look like this matrix right here. Now, that means that this position right here needs to be a 1. Now the way we get that position to be a 1 is we take and multiply the second row by its reciprocal. We want to multiply row 2 by negative 2 23rds. And when we do that, we get 1 3 halves, 13 over 2, and we get 0, 1, um, and then here we have negative 2 divided by 23 times negative 69 divided by 2, this spot comes out to be positive 3. That's, that spot is from taking negative 2 thirds times the negative 69 over 2. Okay, we're almost there. The last thing we need to do is we need to be th have this position be a 0. And now we're going to do a third row operation Third, third type of row operation again. We're going to take, in this case, negative 3 halves times row 2 and add that to row 1. And when we do that, the bottom row is going to stay the same. And when we take negative 3 halves times 0, that's still 0, so when we add it to 1, it stays 1. But the other two positions do change because negative 3 halves times 1 is negative 3 halves and when we add that to 3 halves we get the desired 0 and then when we take negative 3 halves times 3 which is negative 9 halves and we add that to 13 halves that comes out to be a positive 2 and so we have now transformed this matrix into what's called reduced row echelon form, reduced row echelon form. And this form is very convenient because this tells us, remember what these positions in the matrix represent, this first column kind of represent the x coefficients the 2 and the 5, remember? 2x and 5x. And the second column represented the y coefficients. And then the third column is the other side, the equal sign. So what this really says, it really says 1x plus 0y equals 2. Or in other words, it says x equals 2. The second one says 0x plus 1y equals 3. Or in other words, y equals 3. In other words, we just found the solution was the ordered pair. 2, comma, 3. Now, some of you may be thinking, this method looks a whole lot more complicated than the elimination method and substitution methods that we reviewed in the last section. And you would be right, especially when you are just being introduced to something totally, completely new and foreign. However, the nice thing is, is the calculators can do all these kind of semi-complicated steps. I would argue that they're not that complicated once you've done them for a while. The calculator can do all these in just a few simple steps, which becomes very nice when we're talking about 3x3 three three systems, where sometimes it can take a full page to solve a problem. So the steps outlined for doing this are right here at the bottom of the, your page in notes. And so what I want to do is show you how to do that. Let's, let's take a look at how we would go ahead and do that. So the very first thing we want to do is we would like to enter this augmented matrix right here. Enter that augmented matrix into 
our calculators. And what we're going to do to do that is we're going to go to Matrix, which is right here on my calculator, the Matrix button. We're going to hit Matrix, and we need to edit our matrix. We need to enter it in. So we are going to take an arrow, right arrow over to Edit, and we can just put it in A. And notice that it asks us for the size first of the matrix. And this is asking for it in the format rows by columns. And if you look at our matrix, we have two rows and we have one, two, three columns. So we're going to call this a two by three matrix. And you'll see it enters in six total spaces without the vertical line between the second and the third column. So that's all right. We don't really have to have that there. So and then you can just put in the data. You just enter two, enter, and three, enter, and 13, enter, and then it moves to the second row, five, enter, negative four, enter, negative two, enter. I want to make sure that when you enter the negatives, make sure you're using this button here below the three, not the minus button over here next to the six. Okay, so now our data is in the matrix. Now we need to row reduce it. So let's get out of the matrix here. The way you do that is you quit out. So you have to hit second and then quit. And it takes us back to our calculation screen. And then we want to go back to matrix. And instead of going to edit this time, we want to do the second spot. We want to do math. So arrow over once to math. And then go down until you get to the RR ref option. On my calculator, it's option B. RR ref. R or R ref. And that stands for reduced row echelon form, which we just did in this last problem by hand. Well, the calculator does it right for you. So you just press enter, and we got to tell it which matrix we want to use our ref on. And we can use, so we go back to matrix one more time. And now just select matrix A. You can see it there as a two by three matrix. So press enter, and then close the parentheses. And this is going to say, okay, let's row reduce to echelon to reduced row echelon form matrix A. And when you press enter, and it tells us that this row reduced matrix turns into one zero two zero one three, and that should look familiar. Should look like what we just got by hand. Now, if that's not fast and convenient, I don't know what is. Um, those steps that we just went through are outlined down here below. All right, so let's now go ahead and use these matrices to solve some of our problems that we just set up in the section 8.5 notes. So if I go back to those notes and I look at... Let's say problem number eight, where we were talking about the ages of Abraham and Bellin and Celeste. We need to first be able to put this in a augmented matrix. And to do that, we need to get this these equations in a better form. We need, remember, we need the number eight on the right hand side and then the a b and c we need to have on the other side so the a is already over here but the b is a positive b on the right hand side which means it's going to be a negative b on the right hand side and then there is no c in this equation if i change the second equation the 2a is on the right hand side so when i move it to the left it becomes a negative 2a there's already a plus b and there's already a plus c and then the 3 stays on the right hand side and then the third equation is already in good form it's a plus b plus c equals 100 38 okay so we need to be able to put this set of three equations, the system of equations, into an augmented matrix. We already saw how to do that. So this is going to look like 1, negative 1, and then 0 because there is no C in the first equation. And then we'll have our vertical line. 
And we have eight. And then the second one looks like negative two. One, one, three. And then one, 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 138. Now, we need to enter that into the calculator and then we'll reduce it. Now, how does that look? Well, we know how to do that. Let's go ahead and put our matrix in again. So we're going to go to matrix and we're going to go to edit. And we now have a three by four. We have three rows and four columns. We enter in our numbers. One, negative one, zero, eight, and negative two, one, one, three, and finally one, 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 one hundred thirty-eight. And we quit. Second quit. And then we again go to matrix, math, looking for R ref. And then we choose matrix A, close parentheses. And this matrix gets transformed into 1, 0, 0, 45. zero one zero thirty seven and finally zero zero one fifty six meaning Abraham's age is forty five Bellin's age is 37 and Celeste's age is 56. Okay, so you could do this with any system of linear equations. You just have to have it in the form where all the um, variables are on the left hand side and the numbers are on the right hand side. And you can enter it in and you can see your answers come very quickly. Now, if you want to use the calculator way, all that I require is that you show me your initial augmented matrix, the one here on the left, and that you show me your final augmented matrix. You don't have to go through any of the other steps. So thank you, and I will see you in class.